What's up guys, June here, and today I want to take a look at some defensive and constitution abilities that people commonly use for tanking. We'll take a look at what they actually do and how we can best optimize our results when using them, as well as a vague look at our tanking ability rotations and ways that we can mitigate damage long term. Hopefully this will give you an intuitive knowledge of the fundamentals of tanking and then you can take that knowledge and apply it to whatever boss you happen to be tanking and incorporate it around whatever special attacks that boss happens to use. Let's start off with Resonance and Preparation, a combination of two abilities that work in synergy and also are a pretty core part of any tanking rotation. Resonance is a basic ability with a total duration of 6 seconds, and it causes the player to be healed by a portion of the damage dealt by whatever the next attack that they receive in that time period is. The amount that's healed is equal to 50% plus half of whatever your shield tier's level is percent. For a level 1 shield, this means that you'd heal 50% of whatever damage you received, and for a level 90 shield, you would receive 95% of whatever that damage was, etc. This is obviously a fantastic ability that really dramatically reduces the amount of food that you'll need to use as part of your tanking strategy. There's also a couple of things that we can do to optimize our heal from resonance. Luckily, this damage is calculated before any kind of soaking from our armor or shield, including the 30% reduction from using a spirit shield. However, the damage is calculated after other reductions such as Prayer or other defensive abilities like Reflect, so if, for example, we're trying to resonance a Mage hit with Mage Prayer on and Reflect, we're only going to get back 25% of whatever damage we could have healed had we not been using those abilities. For this reason, generally any time we are going to be using Resonance, we want to drop our Prayer and make sure that we're using it at a time when we're not using an ability like Debilitate or Reflect. The only time this would not be the case is any situation where there's a chance that the resonance will be triggered by some weaker damage, leaving you open without your prayer to a very, very high damage attack from a boss. Some examples of where this might be the case would be, for example, at Beastmaster Durzag, if you're base tanking and you happen to have chargers on you, if a small damage from one of the chargers triggers your resonance, that leaves you open to being punched for like an 8k by Beastmaster. Similarly, if you're pet tanking Tuz, for example, and you have the magic bleed effect active, the bleed damage can trigger the resonance, and then that leaves you open to tanking a huge hit from his basic magic attack. Using this ability does require a shield, and it has a cooldown of 30 seconds, but that is where the synergistic function with preparation comes in. Preparation is another shield basic ability, and every hit sustained while the player has the effect active, which is a total of 10 seconds, reduces the cooldown of resonance by 3 seconds. Unfortunately, you do need to keep your shield equipped for the entire time that this is active to continue to get the effect, but you can reduce the cooldown time of resonance very significantly depending on how many different things are attacking you. Using our previous example of base tanking at Beastmaster Durzag, if you have several charges on you, you can expect this effect to pretty much reset resonance just by itself. The cooldown on preparation is 20 seconds, so the combination of the two means that you can use resonance more than twice as often. As a side note, these two abilities also work great for adrenaline stalling if you don't happen to be doing any kind of a tank roll. Next up we've got a pair of defensive thresholds that work very very similarly. First up is Reflect, which requires a shield to use, and this reduces the damage taken by the player by 50%, and that additional 50% that's removed is reflected back onto whatever was attacking you to deal that damage. This effect doesn't work on most of the classical bosses that are immune to reflected damage, but for example at raids this does improve the DPS of the tank a little bit. This effect lasts for 10 seconds and has a total cooldown of 30 seconds, so you can use this very frequently. For bosses that are immune to the reflected damage, this is generally not a preferable ability, simply because having your shield equipped for the full duration means losing out on a lot of DPS. For bosses that are susceptible to reflected damage, however, you'll find that depending on the DPS output of the boss itself, this might actually be a net DPS gain, and so becomes a much higher priority defensive ability to use. The next ability is Debilitate, and this is very very similar to Reflect, except that it does not require a shield. This deals up to 100% of ability damage and reduces the amount of damage that the target deals to the player by 50% for some length of time, which depends on whether or not you have a shield equipped. For players using no shield or a level 1 shield, it lasts for a total of 8.4 seconds, and then it gains 0.6 seconds for every 10 levels of shield tier. One important consideration is that this ability does need to hit the opponent for the effect to activate, so if you have low accuracy against the enemy, or if, for example, you've been brewing a lot to restore HP as part of tanking, this is not something you want to use in that specific moment. It's also slightly advantageous because the fact that you don't need to have a shield equipped means that you can get the reduced incoming damage as well as improve your outgoing DPS for the period that is active. 
These two abilities can also be stacked together, though defensive abilities stack multiplicatively, so instead of having 100% total damage reduction because of the 50% plus 50%, the addition of debilitate will reduce 50% of whatever damage is remaining, so the combination of the two is a total of 75% damage reduction. This of course means overall you'll receive less damage reduction from the abilities as if they were used separately, however it can be good situationally for if you're taking a really really strong amount of damage in the short term. Next up we have devotion, which is a really core part of any tanking rotation. This ability makes protection prayers 100% effective for 10 seconds, and that gains an additional 5 seconds if an enemy is killed while the effect is active up to a maximum of 20 seconds, but if you're using this at a boss for example, you should expect to never really get the additional time. There are of course some situations at bosses where you can get that additional time added, for example by killing spider minions at Araxor or killing jellyfish at Yakamaru, but in general you shouldn't expect it. The total cooldown on this ability is 1 minute, and it doesn't require a shield to use, so you can use your offhand while this is active, and be completely impervious to damage assuming that your target is only using one attack style, and also really hammer out the DPS. The only real downside to this ability is that you need to unlock it. Players originally got it from one of the first world events, but now you can get it as a rare drop in the God Wars dungeon, or as unlocked from the Tusca event, which is still able to be done. There are also several other good abilities to be unlocked from that D&D, so if you don't have them, I certainly would recommend taking the time to go and do that. Next up we have Barricade, which is pretty much the tankiest of all tank abilities. It's an ultimate ability, so it is a huge sacrifice of adrenaline just to use this ability, and it does require a shield, however it makes the user pretty much immune to damage for 10 seconds. This even includes sources like typeless damage that most of the other defensive abilities do nothing for. One additional thing to consider is that Barricade blocks the damage even before hit splats are calculated, so for example if you're trying to use preparation to bring the cooldown of resonance off, Barricade blocks the effect from proccing simply because the attacks won't even register on the player. Because of the fact that it's such a huge waste of adrenaline, this is only commonly used to block very very high damage special attacks from bosses like for example Nexus Ice Prison. Next we have another ultimate ability, Immortality, which reduces all damage that the player sustains by 25% for 30 seconds, and if the player happens to die while the effect of Immortality is active, they'll be revived with 40% of their HP, and the Immortality effect will be cleared. This ability has a cooldown of 2 minutes, and it does require a shield to use, and we also have to consider that because it's an ultimate ability, it is a huge sacrifice of adrenaline. The 25% damage reduction may seem small, but simply because the effect is 30 seconds long, that is actually a huge return in reduction of damage. Even considering that, however, this is commonly used as a suicide ability, where you would use immortality and then simply wait to die to get the 40% restoration of HP, and then you could follow that, for example, with resonance to get back towards your maximum HP. Keep in mind that if you're fighting a boss which has some effect which resets defensive abilities that include immortality, this is simply not a worthwhile thing to use, simply because it's too risky, the thought of having immortality cancelled right before you actually suicide yourself could simply ruin a kill for you. Next is another defensive ultimate, Rejuvenate, which restores 40% of your HP as well as any drained stats. It's got a cooldown of 5 minutes and requires a shield, plus it's an ultimate ability, and the only reason it's on here is so that I can basically tell you never to use this if you have the enhanced Excalibur. They share a cooldown, and the Excalibur effect is basically identical to Rejuvenate, although it's a little bit slower, however you save the 100% adrenaline that you would normally waste by using Rejuvenate. The only very rare cases that you would use this is if you're using any full set of tier 90 tank armor and you have a defensive reset that makes the ability Rejuvenate available to use again without being able to use Excalibur. Even in that case, you have to consider that the adrenaline waste is significant and weigh that against what other options you have for defensive abilities in context. Next, I just want to mention a basic ability called Sacrifice. This is another one of the abilities that you can obtain from that Tusca event D&D, and it's definitely worthwhile getting. It's a simple basic that deals 20-100% to of your ability damage, but it heals you by 25% of the damage that you dealt, or 100% if the hit kills its target. This falls on the weaker end of the spectrum of basic abilities, but it ties things like Chain and Ricochet, and is slightly stronger than things like Rack and Piercing Shot, and the addition of the healing effect makes it a really great basic to be using as a tank anytime you get the opportunity. Lastly, I want to talk about two abilities that people commonly use that they probably shouldn't. First is Transfigure, which is a constitution ultimate that is one of the abilities that you unlock from the Tusca event as well. The player gets bound for 6 seconds, and when the effect expires, they're healed for 250% of whatever damage they received while that effect was active, but it's capped at 5,000. Afterward, the player also becomes immune to stuns and binds for 15 seconds. 
Simply put, the healing cap is so low that this is very rarely useful, and since it's an ultimate, it's a pretty significant waste of adrenaline when you could get better results from other defensive abilities. As I've covered in my Virago bomb tanking guide, there's really only one situation in all of RuneScape where you'll ever use this, and that is one time on phase 2 of Virago as the bomb tank. Lastly is the ability Bash, which is a basic and requires a shield with a short cooldown of 15 seconds, and this deals 20-100% to of the total ability damage plus the armor value of whatever your shield is, plus your defense level. The combination of all those things may give you the impression that this is a high damage basic ability, but it really isn't. It doesn't even compare to some of your weaker basic abilities without wielding an offhand. In general, as you become more experienced as a tank, you should expect to be switching back and forth between your shield and your offhand very frequently, and even as a very inexperienced tank where you're consistently shield camping, you should only very rarely find use for the ability Bash. My suggestion in general would simply be to ignore the fact that this ability even exists. There's one more ability I want to talk about, and I saved this for last because unfortunately you're going to probably be utilizing this mostly to avoid boss special attacks depending on what boss you happen to be fighting. This is of course Anticipation, and it has the passive effect of reducing your overall damage taken by 10% for the 10 seconds that it's active. If you're at Nex or Araxor, for example, you of course want to be using Anticipation to block the drag effect or any of Araxor's special attacks, but for bosses that don't have special attacks that need to be blocked with Anticipation, you can throw this in alongside other things to boost the overall damage reduction by just a little bit. It doesn't require a shield, so you can do this alongside using your offhand weapon, and it's a basic ability, so it's a great way to build a little bit of adrenaline, or alternatively, you can use it to stall adrenaline if you're moving between phases at some boss. Now let's take these abilities and look at some kind of a vague example of what a defensive rotation might look like. Obviously, different bosses have different special attack rotations, and you're basically going to need to cater your defensive rotation to whatever that special attack rotation looks like. This will however be a good exercise in looking at what a vague rotation might look like for defensives and give you the ability to adapt your style to whatever the boss happens to be doing. We'll start by looking at some arbitrary length of time. I chose 1 minute because most ability cooldowns seem to center around 1 minute or a multiplicative thereof, and I've divided that 1 minute down into 10 second intervals because most ability durations seem to be in intervals of 10 seconds. Then I've taken and plugged in some random defensive abilities into our 10 second intervals, we could start off, for example, with Resonance. Let's assume that this one minute is somewhere in the middle of a fight, so we'd use Resonance to get back towards our maximum HP and follow it with Devotion. During the Devotion period, we of course could put on our offhand, and then when we switch back to our shield after the 10 seconds of Devotion has worn off, we can use Preparation and Reflect together. Reflect will reduce the amount of damage that we take, and Preparation will bring Resonance off cooldown more quickly. After the 10 seconds of Reflect has worn off, we could use Debilitate to reduce the incoming damage for the remaining 10 seconds, and when Debilitate's worn off, we will certainly have Resonance back off, and we may even have Resonance back off more prematurely than that, as a result of using Preparation earlier. After Resonance, we could, for example, use Barricade to remove all the incoming damage for 10 seconds, and then follow that with Reflect again for 10 seconds, and follow that with another Debilitate for 10 seconds. After that debilitate has worn off, we could certainly start our ability rotation all over again. We would have resonance available, as well as devotion to follow it with, and the only thing that we need to change is that barricade would not be back off cooldown as we make our way through the rotation. We could of course swap that out with pretty much anything, like immortality as an alternative. You could of course supplement this with all kinds of things, like adding anticipation for an additional 10% reduction in damage. Or if you find that you're not taking enough damage to justify using all of the defensive abilities, you could leave out things like Barricade, for example, and throw in a Sunshine or Death Swiftness rotation. Even though your primary goal as a tank is to reduce the amount of incoming damage and simply to survive for the fight, it does assist your team and speed up the whole kill in general if you're able to participate in DPS, and by shortening the kill you're thereby also reducing the amount of damage that you'll sustain over the full duration of the fight. Hopefully this gives you guys a good conceptual framework that you can use and adapt at different bosses, especially if you're brand new to tanking. As always, thank you for watching, and if you got any questions or anything, drop them in the comments or PM me in-game, and I'd be happy to talk about this further with you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.